Hello, I'm Amanda Banda, and welcome to Focal Point, a look into Harlingen CISD's winning team. Joining us today is Oscar Tapia, Assistant Superintendent for District Operations. Thank you for being on our show today. Thank you for inviting me. Um, first of all, we'd like to just introduce you to the community and just, you know, get them, have them get to know you a little better. Mm -hmm. And I know you've been on the position for a, a, almost a year. Almost a year. So let's just tell everybody about your background in education and your family. Okay. Well, my name is Oscar Tapia. I'm uh, the Assistant Superintendent for District Operations. I'm originally from, from Brownsville. I'm a graduate of Pace High School in 1980. <laughs> I think I just gave away my age. But uh, I uh, went off to college and I got a degree in architectural design and uh, came back in the mid-80s and I got a job with the Cameron County Engineering Department um, to regulate construction and uh, FEMA regulations and flood prone, area, uh, flood prone areas, and that's where I got my start in, 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 in the construction and field experience. Uh, although I had a degree in architecture, uh, in the mid-80s there wasn't too many jobs in the architectural industry, kind of like today, uh, hard economic times. But uh, the experience was very good for me. I got a lot of field experience. I got to learn building codes, engineering um, uh, techniques, and construction uh, materials, to, materials and practices. And then from, I did that for a couple of years, and then I went to work for the city of Brownsville. I was the uh, city planning and zoning administrator. I got involved in urban and, uh, and, and rural design projects, uh, subdivision requirements, uh, land use ordinances for land uses, and um, just a variety of planning issues. And I did that for about three years, and then I became the city building official to regulate all development in, in, in Brownsville for all issuing all building permits, regulating parking lots, landscaping ordinances, all kind of codes and fire codes, uh, health codes that you can think of. So I got a really, really good diverse background uh, experience there. And then in 1992, uh, I was offered a job with the school district in, in Brownsville to oversee their construction program. And I was there for 17 years. Uh, for about eight of those years, I oversaw both the maintenance and the facilities department, maintaining existing buildings and building new ones. And um, during my 17 years there with, um, with the, the Brownsville School District, we opened up 20 new schools. Wow. When I started in 92, we had just started construction on Lopez High School, which was the new high school mm -hmm. at that time. And when I left last year, uh, we, were, we had just completed construction on Veterans Memorial High School, which is now the new high school yeah. uh, 17 years later. Uh, so that brings uh, Brownsville to six high schools. And uh, it was like five middle schools and about 13 new elementary schools that we opened up during my time there. So I got a real good uh, knowledge base of, of, of uh, building uh, schools, designing schools, and, and opening them up for, for the kids. And I also uh, got my Master's in Business Administration. During that time, I was going to school part-time, so I have an MBA. And uh, I'm married now. I have uh, two sons. And uh, just recently, my wife got hired with a school district here in Harlingen, and she's a, she's a school nurse with, at Midem Elementary. Also have my uh, fifth grader, my ten-year-old son Nicholas. He's also uh, a Harlingen uh, student in our mm. in our school system, and I even have a four-year-old that uh, I'm bringing to preschool here in in Harlingen as well at Wesley uh, Preschool. So uh, we're vested uh, in the community. Mm. I have my my family here and my children in the school system. Great. And what kinds of experiences? You mentioned all those other positions that you had. What other what kinds of experiences or knowledge were you able to bring into your new position? Well, the maintenance department really helped maintaining the existing schools because if you don't maintain them, cor uh, maintain them correctly, it's going to cost you twice or right. three times as much to fix them at a later date. So you have to invest uh, good quality materials into your projects and have a good preventive maintenance program in, in, in place. So those were invaluable experiences and also keeping up with all the codes. There's so many different local, state, and federal regulations that you have to be, uh, keep up with. So that, that certainly helped me uh, uh, keep up with all the regulations. Great. And I know you've been on your position for almost a year, like we'd mentioned. How has it been settling into the new position, making the change to Harlingen? Uh, what's been different, um, what's different about this position, is this is, a, this is an assistant superintendent for district operations. So although I worked with um, building maintenance, custodial, and new construction, here in this job, in addition, I have the food service, child nutrition department, mm -hmm. and the transportation department, which is somewhat new to me. Uh, I did work with those departments in my previous job uh, for, for many years, so I had an idea of what, what they involved. But now I'm more involved with them on a, on a daily, day-to-day uh, -day operations. So that's been a new experience and a refreshing 
yeah. uh, area because I, I guess the reason why I left Brownsville uh, School District is I, I just so many years doing the same thing. I wanted to do something different. I wanted to add to my experiences and and expose myself to to other areas that I had not worked in and um, and then just uh, sharpen up my skills in yeah. other areas. Great. And I understand the district adopted conservation as one of its goals last year. Right. Can you tell us about some of the programs your department has going on or has done to promote that conservation? Well, we updated the uh, energy management and conservation plan, uh, uh, basically dealing with setting the temperatures at schools to, that are more uh, efficient. Uh, many times you want to bring the temperatures real low to maintain humidity control, but that just eats up a lot of energy. So when we want to maintain temperatures around 75 uh, 76, but if you have humidity problems, it's going to feel warm and sticky, so they want to drop the temperature. Right. But if that's happening, that means there's something wrong with the AC system. So we're trying to, to balance keeping a, a moderate temperature with a, a lower humidity to, 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 to create a good comfort zone for, for the kids. Uh, so we're working with uh, the air conditioning systems, uh, the lighting. Uh, many times we leave the lights on all night. We're trying to set timers as to when the lights should go on, go off the type of fixtures and bulbs. There's some very high energy efficient uh, fixtures out there that we're trying to, to implement and change out um, and get rid of the, uh, the bulbs that are not as, as efficient. We also have a watering schedule as to when schools should be watering the, the fields. So there's a variety of things. Mm -hmm. And also in the bomb program we have a lot of air conditioning upgrades, changing out equipment that is more energy efficient. In some of the new roofs we want to put uh, improve the building envelope by adding uh, additional insulation on the roof, the roof structure, mm -hmm. so it also uh, increases the R value, and that also in turn saves saves energy. Great. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the bond. Can you talk about that for a little bit? Just give us a brief description or overview of it. Yes, the bond is a ninety-eight point six million dollar bond program, uh, and the, the highlight projects in that bond are a new uh, ninth grade academy, uh, and that's going to be very helpful because our mm -hmm. two high schools are very overcrowded. Um, the new academy, ninth grade academy, is going to pull about seven hundred kids from Harlingen High and about 500 to 550 kids from, from Harlingen South. So that's going to relieve the overcrowding at the high yeah. schools and then provide a specialized campus where we'll focus strictly on ninth graders, which is, uh, we're finding out is a very uh, delicate uh, time and, and, and critical time in the, the students uh, where, where they either excel and succeed or they go off on a different path and they start having uh, academic problems, or maybe some dropout pro issues. And uh, so we want to isolate them in an environment where we can focus more uh, on keeping them in school and helping them get their high school credits. Great. And why do you feel the Harlingen community um, decided to go ahead and pass the bond? Well, we had a lot of presentations with the community and I think they understood that, that we had to do something to relieve overcrowding. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's a lot of issues right now with the state, the economic situation that we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Is there going to be any funding? And uh, being that there was a state grant program to help us pay for some of the bond. Um, it was very uh, enticing for us to propose this to the community. The community understood that this is a good time to try to get, if we pass the bond and we got the um, instructional facilities allotment grant, that the state would pay for half. So it was a, a good time uh, to pass a bond. Mm -hmm. Great. And what can our commu school community expect in the next few months in terms of facility projects connected to the bond? Um, in the next few months, immediately, th there are some remodeling projects we're going to do either in-house with some of our staff or hire some contracted services for small projects mm -hmm. that don't require uh, hiring architects and engineers and going through the whole design process and doing plans and specs and bidding them out. That, that process yeah. is a little longer. So the smaller projects that we'll start seeing some immediate work at schools on uh, some, maybe some parking lots or some sidewalks, fencing, lighting, and small remodeling projects. Uh, so those will happen immediately. The, the bigger projects like the Ninth Grade Academy, the new uh, uh, Memorial Middle School, uh, the Performing Arts uh, Center, those are going to take about six to eight months. The Ninth Grade Academy, maybe ten months of building programming, schematic designing, yeah. design development, getting, trying to figure out what exactly we're going to do with the structure, and then getting the plans ready and bid them out. So that process is going to take a little longer. And what is District Operations' main responsibility in handling these projects? Well, what we're going to do is, is to work closely with the architect to make sure that what we want in the building is, is exactly what our, uh, the end users uh, require. And that'll involve, involve having design committees with some teachers, band directors, uh, nurses, librarians, everybody that uses the buildings. Mm -hmm. 
uh, curriculum very important, how many science labs, there's so many different types of science labs, physics, biology, uh, physical science, and, and chemistry that require uh, very uh, attention to detail. So we're going to be working with these committees, involving them in, in, in the design, and uh, possibly even get some student input to, to help us with the design. Yeah. What does it mean for district operations to under-promise and over-deliver? Well, what, what we mean by that is that when we uh, promise that we're going to do a job, that means we're going to do it in the time frame that we said, if not under. And we don't want to uh, over-promise and not get the job done in time. Right. Uh, it sets a bad tone for, for our workers and for, for the schools not trusting that we're going to get the work done. So when a school submits a job and it's approved to be done, they know that it'll, it'll be done within the time frame that they're, uh, that's reasonable and, and uh, within the time frame that we say that we can do it. That's great. Mm -hmm. And now I just want to give you the opportunity to address the community directly. Is there anything, a message that you would like to say to them or that you have? Well, well, we're very thankful of, for everybody to support the bond program. I think it was very critical, a very critical time that we passed this bond issue. Uh, there's three very important critical factors that, that come into play as to why it was important to pass this bond at this time. And obviously the, the community uh, agreed with us. Is that the first thing is that there was this grant, the Instructional Facilities Allotment Grant Program, where the state pays for 50% of the bond uh, payments. Basically that means it's a 50% sale. We get, we're getting uh, yeah. twice as much for our money. Also, the, uh, the environment right, right now in the economy and the market is the interest rates are very, very low. Uh, they haven't been this low in 30, 40, some say 50 years, and that we probably won't see these rates uh, for many, many more years to come into, into the future. I believe we got a rate something like 3.34 percent, which is almost unheard of, so it's a very, very uh, cheap, affordable bond program for the community. And lastly, the, uh, because of the economic state that we're in, the construction uh, uh, industry right now is down. There's not a lot of construction, so there's a lot of uh, uh, contractors out there looking for work. Materials costs are down, so we're going to get very, very competitive, uh, very good competitive prices on our buildings. So with all those three factors, uh, it, was a, it was a win. It was a uh, yeah. knocked out of the park with this bond program, and, I, and we're all very grateful that the community supported it. And now all we have to do now is just follow through with the projects and, and give the community the best product that we can give them and, 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 uh, and, and be very diligent and, and smart about spending their money. Definitely. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming on the okay. show today. Well, thank you for inviting me. I'm glad to be here. And thank you for joining us on this edition of Focal Point. I'm Amanda Banda. Be sure to join us next time as we take another look into Harlingen CISD's winning team. Mm -hmm.